Hey guys and welcome to subtopic 3.8 on amides. This is our first science understanding. Carboxylic acids undergo condensation reactions with amines to form amides. You'll need to be able to draw the structural formula of the amide formed from a carboxylic acid and an amine given their structural formulae or vice versa and draw the structural formula of a polyamide given the structural formula or formulae of the monomer or monomers or vice versa. Like esters, amides are formed from what we call condensation reactions. However, they form from condensation reactions between amines, this can be primary or secondary, and carboxylic acids. This is a general equation showing you the formation of an amide. So we've got a carboxylic acid and an amine here. We have the OH group from the carboxylic acid and a hydrogen from the amine going to produce water. So water will be released and we end up joining the carbon to this nitrogen here. The combination of this carbon to oxygen double bond and this carbon to nitrogen itself is typically what we refer to as the amide functional group. We can see in black the new bond that's being formed to produce our amide. For example one, we're going to look at drawing the structural formula for the amides formed from the compounds below. In blue we can see we've got our carboxyl functional group here and in red we can see that we've got an amino functional group here. We've aligned the molecules so that these three atoms here will be eliminated as a water molecule and then we simply look at joining this carbon to that nitrogen here and in doing so we would form this amide as given. We can see the carbon to oxygen double bond followed by that new carbon to nitrogen bond. And again, this entire section here, these atoms are what will make up our amide functional group. For part B, we've got the skeletal formula of some different molecules here. So to the left, we've got our amine, and to the right, we've got our carboxylic acid. And again, I've just aligned them so that we get the elimination of water from this point here. We then get this carbon bonded to the oxygen going to bond to the nitrogen here and therefore it will result in this amide being formed here. For example 2, we'll need to look at drawing the structural formulae for the carboxylic acid and amine that could be used to make the amide below. So we need to identify where the amide functional group is. So I'm just going to circle it over here. The other thing to identify is that it's the carbon to nitrogen bond that forms to produce an amide. So this is going to be the bond that we essentially break to look at what amine or what carboxylic acid uh, could be used to produce this. Over to the left we can see that this section here will form the amine and all we need to do is add an additional hydrogen to this side that will form this skeletal formula and over to the right we know this is going to be formed from the carboxylic acid because it has that C to O double bond and all that's missing is a C to OH so the second product is shown there. For the next science understanding we're going to look at how to draw the structural formula of a polyamide given the structural formula or formulae of the monomer or monomers or vice versa. So like polyesters Polyamides are polymers that also form from condensation reactions. However, they will form between amino and carboxyl functional groups. Another name for these types of reactions are called condensation polymerization reactions. This can form from either one monomer or two different monomers. Let's start with number one with one monomer. This monomer must consist of both functional groups so that they can undergo condensation reactions. We call these monomers amino carboxylic acids. I've got the general formula for an amino carboxylic acid over to the right. So we can see from here we have the amino group on the left, the carboxyl group on the right, and I've just drawn a series of three of these molecules here. I've circled then the atoms involved in the formation of water, making it a condensation reaction. And in doing so, we get the nitrogen bonded to this carbon, the nitrogen in this molecule bonded to the carbon in this molecule. 
that's going to produce a molecule that looks like this. And we could circle and identify our amide functional groups like this. We can also identify what we call the repeating unit. So I've indicated that in the square brackets. And like with polyesters, we can determine that this is formed from one monomer based on the alignment or positioning of those amide functional groups. We can see that all the amide groups are aligned in the same manner. So this tells us that it's formed from just one monomer. Method two is going to consist of two monomers. So one will consist of amino functional groups, the other with carboxyl functional groups. We call them namely a diamine and a dicarboxylic acid. We can see the alignment of these two different molecules to the right. We're going to get the same condensation reactions occurring between these functional groups. We could also show that the functional groups in the middle will also result in the elimination of water. So this is going to form our polyamide as shown below. Included in this structure, we can also see the repeating unit in square brackets. And the giveaway that this polyamides form from two monomers is to do with the fact that the amide functional groups actually have opposite or alternating alignments. So we could think of this group as pointing to the left, this one to the right, this one to the left, this one to the right, and so on. And to finish up, we can just circle and identify our amide functional groups there. For our last science understanding, amides may be hydrolyzed under acidic or alkaline conditions. You'll need to identify the products of acidic or alkaline hydrolysis of an amide or polyamide given the appropriate structural formula. Hydrolysis has been covered previously in 3.7 esters, but just to remind you, hydrolysis involves a reaction with water and it results in the cleaving of chemical bonds. We can think of hydrolysis reactions as the reverse of condensation reactions. This can occur under acidic as well as alkaline conditions. Under acidic conditions, we're looking at this occurring in the presence of hydrogen ions or hydronium ions. One thing to point out is that you're not expected to be able to write equations, but I'm going to show you the equation down below. To do that, I'm going to show the amide reacting with hydronium ions, and you'll see in a moment why. In the hydrolysis reaction, we're going to see the breaking of this bond in black here between the carbon and nitrogen. Over to the left, under acidic conditions, we're going to look at the formation of a carboxylic acid. Over to the right with our amino component, because it's under acidic conditions, we're actually going to look at the formation of a protonated amine. And that goes back to our work in 3.6 amines, where we found out that in acidic conditions, amines have the ability to accept protons, given that amines are weak bases. In regards to alkaline conditions, this will occur in the presence of hydroxide ions. Keep in mind that you don't need to know how to write these equations, you just need to know what the products are and how to draw them. But below we do have the equation, so we've got our amide reacting with hydroxide ions. This carbon to nitrogen bond will break. Over to the left under alkaline conditions, we're going to produce a carboxylate ion, which is negatively charged. And over to the right, we have our amine component. So under alkaline conditions, this will just produce an amine. To finish off, we'll have a look at a couple examples. Example five, draw the structural formulae of the products of the acidic hydrolysis of paracetamol, which is shown below. The first thing to do is identify the amide functional group, which is this one here. The other thing to identify is it's this bond that will end up breaking. And so if we have a look to the right, this section with a C to O double bond will form our carboxylic acid. And over to the left, this section of the molecule will form a protonated amine. So the first product to the left can be drawn as such. And the second product we can draw as our carboxylic acid. For our final example, draw the structural formula of the products of the alkaline hydrolysis of capsaicin, which is shown below. So again, 
we need to identify our amide functional group, which is here. The carbon to nitrogen bond is what will undergo a break. And so to the left over this side, we can see the nitrogen is present. So this is going to form an amine and it will have this structure here. You should be able to see that the rest of the molecule hasn't changed. It's just that nitrogen has gained a hydrogen. And then this section of the molecule of capsaicin with the C to O double bond will end up forming a carboxylate anion. And that can be drawn as shown below. That concludes our work on 3.8 amides. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.